Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to episode 12 of Retro Buyer's Guide. And today we're gonna to be talking about the ColecoVision. So the ColecoVision to me represents the, the first big step in home console generations. It's part of the second generation of home consoles and it was released in August of 1982 uh, to compete with the Atari VCS or, or 2600 and the Mattel Intellivision. Uh, the difference was is that when you bought a ColecoVision, you got near arcade perfect ports of games that were very popular at the time like Donkey Kong and Pepper and Venture. And uh, so it was a big step in terms of uh, graphic quality compared to the Atari 2600 and the Mattel and television. You know, nothing against those consoles. They're, they're good in their own right, but uh, it was a big step at the time. Unfortunately, uh, as most of you who are familiar with video game history know, uh, August 1982, that's, that's a year before the, the video game crash of 1983. And unfortunately, the market uh, fell apart and ColecoVision um, never really caught on in the public. Um, there were roughly about 140 titles or so released for the ColecoVision and um, you know most of them are pretty good. Um, there's some really good uh, arcade games in there like Zaxxon and, and like I said Donkey Kong which was the pack-in title for it. Um, ColecoVision never really was able to bounce back. Uh, you know they kind of put everything into um, or, or I should say Coleco never really bounced back. They kind of put everything into the ColecoVision um, and then it, it, it kind of fell out uh, you know in 83. They were able to bounce back somewhat with the Cabbage Patch doll which was um, the uh, most wanted toy, you know, uh, that Christmas. But eventually, Connecticut Leather Company went out of business. So let's take a closer look at the ColecoVision. So this is the ColecoVision console, and uh, one really cool thing you can't really see looking at it from this angle is the, the front faceplate here it has the uh, ColecoVision logo on it. I just think it looks really cool. Uh, also, the door here for the expansion modules. You can uh, open this guy here and fit uh, your uh, expansion module one, two, or three into it. Uh, one being, uh, I believe, the steering wheel you can use to uh, play with racing games. Uh, two is the Atari 2600 adapter. I might have this backwards. Uh, which you can uh, play Atari 2600 games on the ColecoVision, which is crazy to think about now. I mean, that'd be like, you know, Microsoft releasing a, a, an adapter for the Xbox One so you can play PS4 games on it. Um, but at the time, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing flew because uh, the uh, adapter was made from off-the-shelf parts and I believe the Atari 2600, and it didn't infringe on any of the, the Atari 2600's uh, patents. Um, plus, Nolan Bushnell was terrible about getting patents anyway. Uh, so here's the top of it. Uh, the cartridges go in here. Uh, I'll show you, this is my really worn copy of Zaxxon. Uh, fits right in there, plugs in all nice and snug. Um, the other thing is you can chainsaw this guy in half and this is literally just plastic mold to hold the controllers. There's no part of the circuit board that's in there at all. Um, the worst thing I think about the ColecoVision is the controllers. Um, the cords are plenty long or whatever, but um, when your jumping off point is a telephone, um, it just doesn't make sense for a controller. I was... Uh, taking some footage of uh, Donkey Kong earlier and this controller is just not that great um, for controlling um, uh, Mario or Jumpman or however you want to call him but the uh, it, it's just really weird uh, the way that it, uh, it controls because I feel like you have to be really harsh on the, the directional pad here uh, this little joystick thing to, to get it to register and it could be speed these controllers but I, mean, I tried both of them and it seem to be that way. Uh, the other thing is like a lot of other consoles of the day, you have a keypad here, um, which, you know, you can incorporate and use with other games. And then um, I believe this could take some overlays as well. This little side pocket here. Um, not many games took advantage of the keypad. So I'm not sure why so many companies kept doing this. Atari did it. Atari did it all the way until the Jaguar. Um, you also had Intellivision, which had a, a, a keypad in it, and uh, you could put overlays. And you know, the, the games were so simple and rudimentary that you know there wasn't really a need for like eight buttons. I guess the the thought was is that you know games were going to get more and more complicated, and so we better have the buttons for it. But I mean, uh, that never really came to fruition at all. So anyway, um, let's check out some uh, ColecoVision games and uh, see. 
uh, just how advanced this guy was for the time uh, compared to its competition. <laughs> So there you have it, the ColecoVision. All in all, a very good console if you're into home ports of great arcade games. There's quite a few on the console. Uh, I only showed you six because that's all the games I own right now, but I'm planning on picking up more in the future. So as always, thank you for watching Retro Buyer's Guide, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Until then, happy collecting. <laughs>